This is the how-to video of how I fit I can track the plinths to relevant door liners. This is how I do our control. So the first thing I always do is make sure that the guys are up here. They've gone downstairs, looked at the margins downstairs. These margins here are 10 mil. So I'm gonna do exactly the same here. So I'm gonna set them square 10 mil. Now, one thing I will do, I won't actually set it down on 10 mil because the pencil lines and the lot have mil. I'm gonna do 10 mil like that. corner so now it's 10 mil 10 mil and then what we'll do is i'll probably put up like five points down here now so i'm just going to mark 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 same as it's done so i'm moving up there you go doing that and then obviously the corner again get this in here and i'll actually once you put one in the middle i'll actually do one about here and then one about here that. There's two different types of linings, yeah? It's called door linings where you have the lining and the rebate, the slamming effect, they call it, to create the rebate for the door. Or you have these called the door casing where it's a piece of solid timber and it's rebated out with a spindle moulder to the thickness and size of the door. But you can also reproduce a casing by doing a wider strip plant on here which comes all the way through then to the architrave line here, which obviously then affects the architrave this side. It's casing, so that means that this comes all the way through, so that means I have to put the, the slamming strip on first. It'll come all the way through, and then I'll have to map the architrave, so I can't do this side, okay guys? Now, the one thing I do know is that the, the doors up here are going to be 44 mil thick. So I'm gonna set the door line to be 46 to allow a couple of mil paint. There you go. And the reason I'll do it now is once it's done, I ain't gonna mess around later on with it. Now the one thing on this door line and I trade, they've got a bottom plinth block. Just a here, really nice detail. This is a bit of machine PSC, it's 114 mil by a beast of 38 mil so and in american terminology inch and a half by four and a half inches just measured the bottom of the plinth line here now and this bottom here is 290 mil so i'm going to measure cut these two now I'm ready to go to the bottom of the plinth so i won't mess around i'll just cut it to about 620 like that Measure now, 290. I'll measure it again, I'll just line the other piece up there, like that. Two pieces exactly the same size. So I've got a left and right hand now, so let's go and fix those up. So you can see this detail here, so the mould itself stepped in 7mm. So I'm going to step it in 7mm, put that in, and put a couple of screws in like filters do. So what I'm going to do now is mark that. Up here. That should do the 290. Do the same on the side. 7mm. 7mm. Now, the one thing I'll do is just make sure I'm happy that it's nice and clean. So I've already cleaned the lining down, which is fine. I'm going to set this first one and I'll countersink and counter the other in as well. And then that's why I like these best door countersinks. It's a pilot drill as well as a countersink. Mark it up. It's that one. It's that one. Yes, that is. Happy with that now. And one thing I will do is I'll just get the pilot. Not. 
I'm one of these, I'm a bit of a firm believer that you shouldn't need grab it easy for the back of an arc in favour of a as far as I'm concerned, as long as you use the right fixings. Uh, I'd always screw the plinth block, but I will definitely use ovals on here, and then I'll glue and pin that up there as well. So I'll just have a little bit off. Oh, oh, I did this. Oh, I'll move it up, mark my line, you see it here now. I'll move it from the other side. I'll just, just, it, just draw it. And the reason I'm drawing the height is just so I can move it up easily. The way you'll see I do arch the train. All I'm going to do is cut the lens now. The measurement I actually need is actually 1816, but I'm actually a bit taller, so I'll do it like at a 1900 or I can do it 1850. So. Let's put two pieces at 1850. You've got to remember you've got a left hand and a right hand. The left hand I want it nice and clean cut down and I go down to the plinth blocks. This will be the first one. 1850 will do it there. Now at the moment that will be my right hand. All I'll do is I'll push that up. I've got my guide. Don't forget these are just rough lengths. I'm going to flip the arc and try around the other way now. So I'll do the same length like that. Push it up. Side. That means I've got two nice clean edges now going down to the pink blocks, haven't we guys? Let's go and have a look at those. So, line up into that. Nice and crisp across here. And all I'll do now is I'll mark here. Come to the other side here. Line up again. I'll pinch it, mark it again. And I'll put these two legs. And what I'll then do is I'll then work my way around at the head. So normally, if the saws are that good of today, you can pretty much just titivate it with the plane if you need to, but normally just go straight away. So I've got my left and right hand there. I won't actually fit these in until I actually now get a piece of the eye controller, which is run up there for a second. Measure what I need, like that, mark that up. Like that, and I'll measure that overall length, I'll make it longer, and I'll just do that 45. I always work from left to right, which is the way I work. So it's a metre 40, I'm just giving myself a bit over there and a bit over here. That's my long shoulder length there. Metre 40, mark it up. I'm just going to square that off. Spin it around and now I'm going to cut that one in at 45. What I'll do is I'll put a couple of these pins in my pocket. And the first nail I will put here is going to be the bottom panel. You notice I've turned the nail the other way around. I'll well, just tap it into there, I won't knock it all the way in. Come up probably about a foot. There we go. See so look, not knocked all the way ahead. So just tap her in. And look, just coming up to the top there nicely now. She sees she's got a bit of a camera on, so what I'll probably do now is tap her in here. And we pull that into that line now, you see it? Because it's got quite a bit of a spring on it, I'll actually take it slightly past the line because you know, when I get the nail it, it will try and spring back, so. There we go. Good. If you notice, I stroke the nail like this, I don't bang. First thing, that's my guideline all the way across, isn't it, guys, here? So let's have a look. Look at that. And what I'll do now, I know that mite is absolutely beautiful. I'll come across here. Mark my next mitre here like that, and then I'll mark it underneath. And all I'm going to do is mitre this way now, so we'll do it again. I've done. There we go. One thing I'll do before I go gluing anything, I'll just lift it off of the top. Get it in the right place. That's going to work beautifully, in it, guys. So I'll be putting out loads of glue on here. I don't like, I know a lot of people do use that two-pack glue. I don't like using two-pack glue. I think it's quite brill. I mean, obviously the products today are a lot better. But for me, I, I like the old schools, just the way I've been taught for years. So I'm gonna put a really good pack glue on there. I'm gonna get that slide up nicely here. So I'm just gonna put a tack in here. And what I'll do is I'll just cut that. Before I do it, I'll just check this corner. And it's really important I'll check this line up here, you see it? I'm now just gonna push that up just so it means I'm happy with that now. Same again, around the nail off. For when I'm doing smaller nails, I always put my finger down the back of the hammer, hold the hammer like this. It gives me a little bit more control. 
tap it in and then obviously pull itself back like that. And I actually put four nails in here now, that's what I'll do. Four angles. I've got a difference here, you see it? This my ticket, there's a lip here, you can actually see that lip guys, you see it? Now what I'll do is I'll come from the top first. Same again, turn the nail upside down, tap it like that, and then put the nail in. Okay, so I've got a slight angle. Now all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna tap that timber back until we go. Now sometimes it's really difficult to push that back flush as well as hit it. So what you can do is just get yourself a little wedge. So this is just a little bit of a trick. Now all I'll do is I'll put it at the top up here, push that in and I'll just tap that. And Beautiful now that is. Right, happy with that. Put that back out. Sometimes when you line these up, these are instantly blue. So all you gotta do is just tap that, tap it. Right. There you go. There you go, that's that. It's beautiful, look at that. Lovely. So the next one, onto there. Tighter, and then what I'll actually do then is I'll actually set this corner now. There we go, you can see this is like that. That's it. So, all I do is just come down from the top again. Sometimes you can tap it and hold it just with your fingers and your thumb on the side. That's it, simple as I'll do one from the side again. The one thing I'll never do is do it right on the edge of the nail, I'll always come down, so basically the rule I always use and I was taught is basically the length of the nail, just like half the thickness, so you know half the length of the nail is going to go into the material, and I always put it on a slight angle as well, like that. Using the side of the hammer. There you go, look at that guys, that's it. So all I've got to do now is run the rest of my nails down. Always think about the decorators behind you. So, there you go. Tap it in. Yeah, I could have used a puzzle gun to do this, but for me, sometimes it's just nice to go back to the old school basics, isn't it? And you notice a lot now I'm holding the hammer. I'm not actually holding the hammer down here, I'm actually holding the hammer lower down like this to make it easier to do. So, I'm just going to clean the glue off now. Oh my God. There we go, you see just a little bit in that corner. Clean the glue out of that, it's just nice, isn't it? Same here. There we go. So guys, I apologise for all the noise in the background when doing this video, but obviously we're on site, we're doing the graph, we've got to get on with the work. But if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and make sure you hit the notification bell and see you on the next one. Take care guys.